backgrounds of the universities around the, the world and all the different continents. And uh, uh, you can ask all the questions you might have, uh, not only to them, but also to the organizers of the event who are here and they're uh, uh, Maria Mazza, uh, Benedetta Magni and Margot Rimber, who are all second year students of BM and BF. And uh, so, yeah, um, I'm gonna now leave the floor to Margot who is gonna talk about the technical uh, information of the exchange application. And in the meanwhile, if you have any questions, either wait till the end of the of each single presentation. So you can raise your hand and all can ask directly like with the, the Zoom call, or you can also use the chat. And uh, there's a lot of older students here who can uh, answer the question while uh, the, the speakers are talking. So, don't be afraid of asking questions and uh, let us know if you have any doubts or questions. Go, Margot. Thank you very much, Asha. Can you guys hear me and see me? Yes, awesome, thank you. Um, so yes, yeah, as Asha said, I am Margot. I'm a second year BF student and course representative. And I am very happy to be here tonight for this uh, exchange event. And thank you all for coming as well. Um, so I am going to start by uh, showing you a few slides of our guide that we wrote with Maria Massa. Uh, just the, the most important slides that you really have to keep in mind. So first of all, let's start with the deadline. <laughs> so the applications are going to open on the 22nd of March. And the application deadline is going to be on the 29th of March at 3 p.m. So write them down. Um, how is it going to work? How do you apply? Uh, so you are going to send your online application to Punto Blue. Um, and then you will have to upload the language certificates uh, that are required. Uh, we are going to we're going to explain this uh, a little bit after uh, those that are mandatory, those that are uh, additional. Uh, we're going to clarify this after. And uh, then you just need to print the receipt of your uh, of your registration, and uh, we also included a, a link for uh, further information if you need it. Okay. Uh, so in terms of the of the requirements, uh, first of all, you gotta be enrolled in your second year of the uh, undergraduate course, and you need at least 60% uh, of the credits from first year. And uh, the minimum weighted GPA uh, that is needed to apply is only 20, uh, 22 out of 30 with the separated modules uh, GPA. Um, and uh, the exams that are gonna be considered valid uh, for those credits are those that are taken until the 3rd of March, uh, 2021, um, even if they were registered after. Uh, again, there is a, a little link if, uh, if you guys want further information. Uh, so the famous uh, language is requirement. It's true that it's a bit um, it's a bit ambiguous. So I hope I'm going to make it a bit clear tonight. So in terms of English requirements, um, there are different um, let's say there are different things that you can have. It's either uh, you are already enrolled in a bachelor's taught in English, in which case you're all good, um, or also if you have your uh, if you chose English as a first language and you pass the book on the exam everything is fine. Otherwise, if you don't fit in any of those categories, you will need to present um, a, a certificate. Um, the, um, let's say that the, the certificates that are the certificates that we uh, that we recommend are usually uh, TOEFL and IELTS. Uh, there's also a, later there's going to be a slide on, on those uh, specifically. And uh, yes, also take into consideration that uh, according to where you apply, there can also be some additional language requirements. Um, especially in countries where English is not the, um, the main language. So, for example, if you if you apply in France, they might ask you for um, a French certificate. Um, I just use French, French as an example because I'm French, so it's obviously the first thing that pops into my mind. Um, but yes, uh, be careful with both the required certificates and also the additional. Uh, yes, in terms in terms of the citizenship. Um, if you are, so here, I guess many of you are international, so it's very important for you. Uh, you cannot apply to an exchange program in your home country. Um, and if you have a double citizenship, uh, you cannot apply to the country where you studied. So for example, let's say you have a, a double citizenship, uh, French and Spain, and you studied in France, you cannot apply to exchanges in France. 
Okay, so there you go. Then you'll focus on IELTS and TOEFL. Um, so you obviously must provide only one of them, <laughs> not both. Um, and they must be they must be valid um, both on the departure date and also uh, on the application date. Uh, so uh, the certificate is considered valid if it was taken uh, not more than two years prior. Um, and in terms of the IELTS, uh, please be careful uh, when you when you register for your IELTS. It has to be the academic one. And um, and here, when we say IELTS point nine is not accepted, what we mean is that the IELTS indicator, or also the uh, now the IELTS home edition that they just came up with, those are not accepted because they are those that you take at home. Uh, so obviously they cannot they cannot be valid. Uh, but for example, the um, the IELTS uh, computer base that you take uh, in the test centers, those are valid. Um, but yes, so be careful that the IELTS it has to be both academic and you have to take it in test center, either computer based or paper based. And um, and yes, also there might be as I just said before some extra language requirements. So be careful to upload uh, those uh, documents as well uh, when you send your application. Uh, and in terms of fees and scholarship, um, so the, the main ones are obviously uh, ISU and uh, Erasmus, um, but there, there might also be some uh, other scholarships that you uh, they can be eligible for. Uh, so please click on the link uh, to, uh, to discover all of them. Um, in terms of the fees, you are only responsible for Bocconi fees. You will not pay the fees of the host university. <laughs> which is pretty cool if you want to go to the US, for example. Um, and uh, yes, other customers be born with the students. So for example, your, uh, let's say your, uh, your accommodation, your uh, flight ticket, your uh, just the living there, everything else is going to be born with the students. But in terms of the tuition, um, you pay book on your fees. And if you, if you, if you are in need of a scholarship, uh, please check uh, Izu and uh, Erasmus first, and then also click on this link to see if you are eligible for anything else. Um, I okay. think that was the last slide, okay. Uh, okay, so thank you very much. <laughs> yes, so I, I yield the floor to Maria. Yeah. <laughs> what? Thank oh, you. Thank you. Um, okay, so as Ash said, uh, I'm Maria Marza. I'm currently attending second year BF. Uh, I've just switched from BF too. Uh, and uh, today I'm going to interview some of our guests. So the first one is Antonino Di Rullo. Welcome. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. And uh, he's going to talk uh, uh, to us about his experience in Hong Kong. Um, so, uh, so, guys, um, nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, my name is Antonino Di Rullo, as Maria, as Maria said. And uh, um, I am a former economics and finance student at Bocconi, of course, and now I'm currently attending the first year of the master in finance as well. And uh, um, for my exchange program, which I sort of, which I did in the first semester of my third year, I went to the University of Hong Kong, HKU in short, in Hong Kong, of course. Um, okay, why did you choose Hong Kong and not like continental China, as many others did? Here are some pictures, by the way, so you can. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like most, okay, only the third picture was taken in Hong Kong, actually, the other. <laughs> but um, so I chose Hong Kong over um, continental China, basically because I wanted to um, to go first to a specific city that uh, allowed me to travel a lot, and Hong Kong had this advantage compared to China. Since uh, in China, there are a lot of issues with the visa. I mean, you cannot necessarily enter and go out many times. Uh, at least I'm not sure you can, but there are some restrictions. While on the other hand, in Hong Kong, I could uh, come and go whenever I want. And, and as you can see, we did a lot of trips. Um, and it was, this was basically the first reason. Then the second, as a finance student, I wanted to discover a little more about the this city has, uh, which is, as everybody knows, a final, a huge financial hub. And so I wanted to know how was living there in case sometime, someday, I would have gone to work there, but I don't think it's gonna happen, but anyway. <laughs> okay, and uh, did you find major differences between like study commitment between the Hong Kong University and Bukoni? 
there are some other um, pages. Yeah, mm, I would say that uh, probably uh, uh, there is absolutely a difference between the two universities. I mean, HKU is a big university, a huge campus, uh, uh, one of the main mm, universities in Hong Kong. Uh, it is less, uh, um, there is a lot of like less bureaucracy compared to Bocconi, which is both a good thing and a bad one. I mean, it's good because you have like uh, less uh, things to face compared to Bocconi, less procedures, but at the same time, there are a lot of things that you have to carry out on your own, of course. From an academic standpoint, uh, I would say that uh, for sure, the like the workload is not not even comparable to the one of Bocconi. It's way way um, easier in some sense. But at the same time, you have to cope with maybe professors that don't necessarily know how to speak English very well. Uh, a different approach to studying and to do ex doing doing exams, because basically a lot of um, a lot of the grade, a big part of the final grade on your exam is given by individual assignments, group assignments. So the exam is not that important there. This was one of the major differences. Um, okay, I see. Um, one last thing. Um, uh, did the political uh, situation in Hong Kong uh, last year influence your experience in a certain way? Oh. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And you can see it in the first picture in the slide. Like this is a photo taken from a bridge on a street, a crowded street due to a protest. Basically, I went to Hong Kong in September, actually in, uh, in the end of August, mm -hmm. and um, until November, there was no real issue. There were protests uh, on the weekends, but nothing worrying. Uh, everything was uh, very peaceful in general. Uh, the problem start problem started in November, mid November, when uh, a lot of universities were occupied and students started uh, rioting, protesting against the Chinese government. So from that moment on, we were moved online. A lot of um, um, our like freedom of movement, if you want to <laughs> call it this way, was a lot restricted. We couldn't take the uh, metro all the time. Uh, there was a curfew, kind of <laughs> right now with the uh, COVID pandemic, but uh, we weren't used to it um, uh, in those days. Anyway, I would say that it was like very, very restricted to only the last part, the last weeks of my exchange, and uh, it didn't impact uh, overall my experience, which has been great overall. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Nino. Uh, no there are no particular questions in the chat right now, but uh, I think people- Yes, absolutely, the... guys, like feel free to contact me for any doubt you may have. I'm always very willing to talk about Hong Kong. Yeah, it's something that I really like, so no problem. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, so our next guest is Marco. Uh, awesome. Hi guys, okay. can you hear me? Uh, yes, yeah. we can, absolutely. Sure. Uh, okay, so if you wanna just introduce yourself, maybe. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Marco Lecchi. I'm a first year marketing management here in Bocconi. And for my bachelor degree, I study economics and management. And for my exchange, I went to Vietnam in the first semester of uh, the last year. And it was an amazing experience. Um, how would you compare uh, like Vietnamese lifestyle in a certain way with respect to the Italian European one we have? Is it very different yeah, uh, regarding course, culture and so on? Yeah, of course, it's it's very different. Uh, the lifestyle is really different. At first, I had a big cultural shock because of the people, because of the the habits, uh, and also because of the food. I actually really like Asian food, but when I got there. Uh, I didn't really got into Vietnamese food and sometimes I had hard times with food uh, also because of different hygiene standards uh, which were quite difficult to adapt but um, if you can be open to taste new things uh, you can you can live there and also uh, you can find uh, all kind of foods uh, international foods we stayed in Hanoi, which is the north capital city of, uh, of Vietnam, and uh, you can find lots of different kind of restaurants, so, so it's, it's fine. Um, okay, I see. Thank you. And uh, what, uh, in terms of university, how um, was the commitment that was required uh, to your university in Vietnam? 
Yeah, um, the the university is quite different. The approach is quite different uh, from Italy, but it's really similar to American ones because um, um, it it was partnered with a book, with a, an American university. So you had a lot of uh, assignments, uh, group works, uh, etc. And uh, compared to Bocconi, it's much much easier to. Uh, the exams are much, much easier, so the grades are better, and also the conversion table, it's uh, favorable, so uh, it's a good good choice. Uh, okay, and from the pictures, we see that you've traveled a lot during your day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to tell us something more about it? Yeah, sure. Um, Vietnam, it's in the center of uh, South Middle Asia, uh, South uh, East Asia. So you can travel around uh, with uh, really low prices. And you can find uh, flights, for example, uh, for 10 euros or 20 euros, more or less. So it's really cheap. And also you can uh, find hotels and uh, amazing experiences at low prices and leave amazing experiences and find uh, amazing landscapes. For example, here in the left picture, I was in Philippines, uh, also in the center, on, also in the picture in the middle. While on the left, on the right side, I was in Cambodia in, the, in some temples. Uh, while in the, the last picture on the left, you can see how was the rush hour in Vietnam. A lot of uh, motorbikes uh, also on uh, the sidewalks. Uh, so it's pretty busy city and very lots of lots of traffic. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, which one is your like uh, best uh, memory from your experience? Okay, in Vietnam, I had two. I have two memories that I I love to to remember. The first one is uh, in the countryside where we stayed um, basically to, to some Vietnamese people that were like um, how do you say contadini? Farmers, 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 farmers. <laughs> farmers. Sorry. <laughs> We say to some farmers and uh, we could got into like their authentic lifestyles and it was quite an amazing experience and uh, also the second time we went to a place which is called Nibin we rented like motorbikes and we traveled freely around the countryside and it was really an amazing experience um, okay there are, uh, there's there are two questions from home for you First yep. one, would you say it's, safe, it's a safe place in terms uh, of accommodation and so on? Yeah, absolutely. It's really safe. Uh, all the East Asia is, is pretty safe. Okay, second question. Uh, were people there uh, they're friendly or rather a little bit reluctant to spend time with, with international students? Uh, well, uh, Vietnamese people are pretty friendly, they are super polite, but there's uh, a big problem, which is the language barrier. Uh, just few Vietnamese people can talk fluent uh, English, so it's pretty tough to, uh, to meet the Vietnamese people and to get friends with them. But they are very, very polite, very kind, so learn uh, Vietnamese, uh, if you <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, thank you so, Mar uh, so much, Marco. No worries, um, thank you. Here, uh, these are your contacts, so I guess people can- Yeah, sure, yeah, these. you can okay. contact me, and also, I had a little thing. If you would like to know more about experience, uh, I made um, uh, a video, some videos on my YouTube channel, uh, and they are in Italian, but you can you can watch it and maybe let me know if you don't understand anything. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, so our next guest is Malvina Meta that has been to China. Where are you, Malvi? Malvi. Malvi. Malvi, I think you are muted. We can't hear you. Um, no, guys, I don't think she's muted. I don't think. I think that uh, her microphone is not working at all. Like she should try with some. <laughs> Amazing. Some... Yeah, I know. But if you if you like pay attention, you hear something. But. <laughs> Just use the other computer. Ah. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> okay, sorry, guys. Okay. So, can you hear me now? Yeah, now it's working. Okay, sorry, but I don't know why it wasn't working before. Okay, that it should be fine now. Okay, so um, hi, everybody. Sorry for the inconvenience. I am Alvina Meta, and last year I spent my exchange experience. <laughs> I'm seeing the pictures now, there's a lot of food. Um, <laughs> I've been. <laughs> I spent my exchange experience in China, as you can see, there, I was in Beijing. And um, differently from Antonino and Marco, it wasn't my really first choice. Uh, it was my ninth choice, but although I, I can really tell you a lot of stories about it, although it wasn't my first uh, choice. I put it because I really wanted to go somewhere and I just left. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh... One question that can uh, come to mind is uh, how was the first impact with China? Like, was there any kind of cultural shock or like any difficulty in getting to know the culture and so on? Okay, so I honestly think that there is nothing more different and diverse than China. And um, I think it's the most diverse country from what we're really used here in uh, Italy and in Europe in general, because it's really everything is completely different from what we have here. So starting from the language, starting from the cultural traditions, um, habits, uh, even the way people uh, interact with each other, also social interactions are different. Um, like I, re I, I used to be, and I think I'm a person with really adapts to everything and also this was one of the reasons because I wanted to live somewhere um, not really caring where going uh, because I just wanted to have a, like a cultural shock experience I wanted to, to see something different and to have a, like a full a, a 100% experience and that that's what I got in China but it was completely unexpected because I had a friend who was staying there before I was leaving and he told me really so many things about China and I thought I was prepared about for it but as I got there actually <laughs> I wasn't at all and like I had my, my real like crisis uh one of the first days i went to a shop to buy some stuff to, to clean my room and i really couldn't understand what to buy i didn't i i, I just bought something because i saw the 99.99 um, uh, percent uh, which i thought it was alcohol so it, it would be fine to to clean <laughs> but i honestly didn't really understand what it was and it was all in chinese even like taxis do not stop like do not mm, if you if, if they see that you are like from the um, from europe from you say like you're not chinese um they don't stop they don't wait for you so it's really shocking and at the beginning i have to be honest uh with the people i left from bocconi undergraduate students there was a chinese guy and he led us to many places restaurants he was booking for us hotels and stuff so i didn't really feel the the thing there uh, but at a certain point um, after we had um a travel in beijing uh like the group split we were not most like we didn't the group split <laughs> and um in that point as at, at that point i started like staying with more other people like spanish french so like just exchange students as me and there it was when i really got the cultural shock because um anywhere where i was going nobody could understand me so i had to learn a bit of chinese even if now i don't remember anything of it i completely <laughs> removed it and um yes uh, there it is. It hasn't been really that easy, but because I don't know, I had some difficulties also with the group of the people I left and also like for the food. I really love eating, but I've never been outside Europe. And when I went there and I see all those things which were completely different from what we eat here, it was like shocking. I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't, I don't know, understand and realize uh, what I what I was experiencing. So at the beginning, it was really quite shocking. Uh, what was the weirdest thing you ate? Um, <laughs> hen, like the, the the chicken's leg, like the the, hens, okay. the final part of the chicken. Yes, like the, there wasn't that much to to eat, but they eat it there. So I tried. Um, yes, that's it. Okay. And what about traveling? Was it easy to travel around the country or to um, neighboring countries? Yeah, Different, differently from what Antonino and Marco said, like when I put China, I didn't know this. So this is something like I think it's good to know before putting China as one of your choices and before leaving. Um, for students who go to China for only six months, so with like exchange students, like exchange students, sorry, like us, for six, uh, with a visa of six months, you cannot travel outside China. Like you can enter and go outside China just once. 
So when you go and when you leave. In fact, uh, like it was quite a bit, mm, not depressing, <laughs> but in the sense, I was seeing like Antonino, Marco, and many other of my friends who were in South Asia, traveling a lot every weekend, going to Singapore, going to Malaysia, going to Thailand, uh, Cambodia, as Marco said before, to many other countries. And I couldn't do that, but I even knew it before. In any case, even when I knew it, I, I decided to accept because I just wanted to go somewhere and to have an experience. But surely if you want to travel and to see many different countries, it's something that you should consider because actually, if you go as exchange students, so if you have the visa for only six months, you can enter and exit um, China only once. So in September, in my, in my case, because my university started in September and then in January when it finished. In fact, I had a bit, um, just one uh, trip when I went, to, I went to Malaysia after I finished my exam. So I, take away all my, I took away all my stuff from China and then went to Malaysia. Okay. Um, one last thing, what about the university life? Was it very different or actually comparable to mm. the one we have here? Well, I have to be honest, at the beginning, I didn't really feel the burden, maybe because <laughs> I was uh, on the other side of the earth. Uh, I was experienced many different uh, things different from what uh, I was used to, so I didn't really notice the burden. But then um, they, uh, like, I went to the, um, as you <laughs> and UBS, like, which is the business school of the University of Nottingham. And um, it's, a, a, sorry, it's, an, it's an English university, which is also, uh, which stays also in China and in Malaysia. So it's really an international context and also the, um, the structure and how the deadlines and the way of study um, assignments, it's like more as we are used here, not in Bocconi, but I mean, maybe in the United Kingdom, if any of you knows, it's more assignment, it's more, uh, group projects uh, so um, it was a bit strange also because in China like students tend to study really a lot and uh, like, I, I felt like a bit a bit in Bocconi <laughs> because everybody was studying <laughs> and the exam session were really stressful because it was in a week uh, the first week of January like many people in Italy were uh, still having fun for Christmas holidays and New Year's Eve we, was, we were studying because like I had the first and the second of January um, but yeah, uh, I have. To, it was not that easy, uh, but I think it's not even like in Bocconi, which is really stressful and it really they really require you a lot. At the end, I have to be honest that also the grades were not that high, uh, <laughs> but I think it was my university because in many other, it was like many group projects, many assignments, yes, but uh, the, um, the grading wasn't that bad. Um, okay, thank Sorry. you, Malvi. I'd say that if there are You're no welcome. questions from home, we can go on with the US. Uh, ah, no, and they're asking uh, what university did you go to? I went to the University of Nottingham, which stays in Ningbo. So it's not a really huge city like Beijing or Shanghai. Um, it's like they consider it to be a second type of uh, city because it has 80 billion of uh, uh, inhabitants. But actually for me, it was really huge because I've never seen any <laughs> city like that. Uh, but when I went to Shanghai and Beijing, I really understood why they consider Ningbo uh, second type uh, city because really Beijing and like Beijing, it, it was something like 27 million inhabitants, like really too many, like it was completely yeah. huge. Yes. Okay. Thank you. If no one else, like you can contact me. Ah, how was the cost of accommodation? Well, my uni, I, I stayed at the, um, on campus. Ah, what I forgot to say is that being an international school, it was really a city with in, in, into a city. So it was really, you entered and you had the whole campus and you really could also stay there forever without no needs to go outside because it was like in the, when you see in the movie, the American campus uh, with gym, with shops, with everything you may need. Uh, so they, the university was um, recommending us to stay in uh, the university accommodation. And uh, even, even if you wanted to stay outside the campus, you had to request it. So it's strongly recommended to stay on campus when it's possible in China, because trust me, it's really, really shocking. Or in case the university doesn't provide you with um, on-campus accommodation, try to find some uh, yeah, um, an accommodation with some of your friends or anyone else who's living with you. Yeah. So that's what I suggest to you. Because trust me, it, may, it seems strange but when you go there it's completely different i don't know if anyone has any 
<laughs> Other questions for China? <laughs> uh, also, yes, like you, you impressed see, all of them. Huh? <laughs> You can see, yes, yeah, some pictures. And I went to Beijing when it was the 17th anniversary of the uh, People's Republic of China. And they're really super patriotic. There were many stuff organized and many people around. And so it was a super um, week going there. Okay, there's one last question, to be honest. OK. Um, it's a bit uh, weird, but like, was it hard to, uh, to adapt to a different concept of government? Did you have uh, or feel any restriction of your freedom? Oh. It's a biased idea. <laughs> no, it's not a biased idea. It's you, I have to be honest, you completely feel it because it's full of cameras anywhere. Like, uh, we, I, as I went outside of my, of my room, there were two cameras pointing on my, on my hall. So, like, you have the perception that you are really control they know like you have the perception that they know what they do what you do because also everything is on online everything is on apps so everything is registered it's not like here like even people prefer that you pay with uh, online apps instead of cash like not so many people use cash there for example and um i think that it's not it was not difficult it was strange and it was interesting because it was really like it's a stereotype it's something that you may think you're biased off but actually when you go there you feel it and it's interesting to see how people live in that uh, in that way and don't feel it and don't feel it like um being constrained or being controlled like we do instead because we are used to something else so it it's been something that we've been discussing a lot during those months with my mates there yes but I, I, it wasn't that um, difficult it was strange at the beginning also in the taxis there are cameras, trust me. It's oh. a, a, anywhere there are cameras. Also in the streets, when you go, they, put the cam they photograph any cars, everything. It's full of cameras everywhere, yes. Okay. Um, for, any, uh, <laughs> for any other question, you can contact me through WhatsApp or also Instagram as you wish. Okay. Thank you, Magdi. Thank you. Um, bye bye. Okay, so uh, now uh, we're going to move to the US. Uh, we're going to have two uh, different guests, Ludovica that uh, has been on the West Coast. And Hi, guys. Francesca. Hi, guys. Hello. Can you Hello. see me? Yes. I mean, okay, because I, I cannot see myself, but if you can no, see yeah, me. Yeah, we can okay. see either, okay. both yes. you and, uh, and Francesca. Okay. okay. Uh, I want to introduce yourself uh, and your experience. Yeah, thank you. Nice to meet you all. I'm Ludovic Arconte and last year in during the second semester, I attended the San Diego State University in San Diego, California. And uh, it was really the best experience of my life. I enjoyed until the last day, then the coronavirus <laughs> broke out and everything was different, but it was really, really amazing. So every question also outside this event, feel free to contact me because I always enjoy talking about uh, San Diego and <laughs> California in general, really. Okay, Francesca? Hi, hi guys, I'm Francesca and uh, I've been an exchange student uh, in Virginia, precisely at the University of Virginia uh, uh, during uh, the uh, last year. So I was also, uh, unlucky because, because of coronavirus. So as Ludovica said, we had to go back early. So it's um, all, all the time we, I hope to talk about my exchange program. So if you want to contact me for every question, I would be happy to answer. And uh, my experience was quite different from Ludovica's one. So I will uh, let her explain uh, her experience so we can uh, focus on both of them. Okay, so uh, first question, uh, why did you respectively choose the West and the East Coast, if there's a reason? Okay, I can start. So basically, uh, during my first year at Bocconi, I was sure that I wanted to, to go to Singapore. <laughs> then I started to talk with a lot of people and everyone that went to the US before told me to go there, especially in California, because it was like 
a really relaxed place with not so hard studies and beaches and sun and really amazing sunset and so on. So at least I said, okay, I think I will choose uh, California in particular. And not the East Coast, basically because I had already visit, uh, visited New York and other cities. So I prefer the West Coast and also because I really... I was really, really obsessed with the California in particular. So my choice was West Coast and California and San Diego specifically. And also because the kind of life you can, um, you can live there. Because as Francesca will say uh, after the me, basically you are going to live two different experiences, not only because of cities and the organization, but also because universities are organized in uh, different ways. Uh, the East Coast probably is more an on-campus life, and Franchi will say, on the West Coast, uh, the, the campus are amazing, are amazing, and also the life on, on campus is is really appreciated by students, but it's not the main focus because California is really huge. There are a lot of things to, to, to visit and see. Also the transportation are not so like costly and also because the, the, the best suggestion is to rent a car and use the car to go everywhere in California. So I always say that there's too much to see and it's too easy to see these beautiful places that you really don't want to stay all the time on campus. So it's a completely different experience. If you want to travel a lot, I think that the West Coast is absolutely the best choice. And what about the East Coast? Yeah, as Lovica said, my experience was totally different. In fact, I wanted to live the real American experience that you can see and watch when you watch a movie. And uh, I have to say that I definitely lived it because uh, we arrived the first day and we immediately felt part of this amazing environment where all the students were wearing uh, our Virginia t-shirts and sweaters <laughs> and everyone was feeling part of something. So it was really the American culture that, uh, and we really felt part of, uh, of this environment. Especially we were really overwhelmed because uh, everyone loved uh, our ex as exchange students from uh, Europe, uh, from all over the world, because we were different. We were bringing a different vision and a different view of uh, everything, uh, both in class, but also with the relationship with other students, et cetera. Uh, additionally, I also have to say that I had a lot of fun because uh, I was uh, in a city that was uh, like about uh, uh, 50,000 inhabitants with 30,000 30, students. So you can imagine that uh, we were mostly students and we were having fun like every day, all the day. Uh, of course, also classes were held in a little bit different way because we were small classes and we had a lot of occasions to talk and have group projects. And uh, it was really, really interesting also under this point of view. Uh, additionally, as, as um, I said also yesterday, I'm really, I'm really fond of sports. So I wanted to leave uh, the American campus experience in order to discover how the sports sector, sector is uh, in America. And as you can see from the last picture, uh, we were at a, at a basketball game. And uh, this experience was amazing because uh, in every place uh, you were going doing these uh, matches, uh, everyone was so excited about the match and the city was like stopping for three hours to see the match. And it was uh, amazing because uh, everyone was partying before and after that. So uh, it was really, really fun. Okay, thank you. Um, now more, let's say, logistic question. Was it hard to get the insurance, the visa, and all the documents necessary to go there and find an accommodation, for example, or the process was pretty smoothly, you'd say? I will get this question. So basically start with the visa. Um, it's not absolutely difficult. The only thing to really pay attention on is time so you need to follow the instruction that you you receive from Bocconi and also from the Frey University and uh, you have to wait for a document that the Foreigno University will send to you and then after you have this document you can start the procedure so uh, just pay attention on uh, on time and basically 
to to leave in the first semester in the second semester around January uh, we start the procedure in uh, November so try to think at these two three months before the, the before leaving also for the first for the first semester and I think that you you will be completely okay uh, but this is important you are gonna be like you have instruction for all of these pro process so no problem no no pressure just pay attention and regarding the insurance unfortunately in this case there's not only one recipe um also because you can be in front of two different situations in some cases the university the foreign university obliges you to uh, take a specific insurance and in this case you cannot do anything <laughs> you have to pay the money that they request <laughs> and that's the, that's the point in other case uh, like and um, in the first case, as I said, um, it can be like in my case, uh, I spent not a lot for the standard range and the, the insurance was uh, uh, proposed by the university. So in some cases, it's also a big advantage because you don't have to search and you have just the, the, the best option proposed by the foreign university. In other case, the foreign university proposed you something, but you can choose also between different options and you can, uh, you can uh, like choose the best one for you in any case uh, to be conservative i would say you can consider a range between uh, 500 and 1000 and a half so i know that it's not a really close range but it's a re there are really different situations around and you cannot predict this cost before knowing which university american university you are going to to attend because as I okay. said, it really depends on it. Okay, uh, they are asking for whom, in which university you were. You were San Diego, right? Yeah, I was the, at the San Diego State University because in San Diego, there's the UC, University of California with different locations around and also in San Diego. But I was at the San Diego State University. That's the okay. state university of the city. And Francesca? I was at the University of Virginia, which is uh, in Virginia, in, in like two hours from Washington, D.C. So it's a little in the middle of nowhere, uh, but yeah. Okay, there's one last question. Uh, were the people overall friendly with you and uh, willing to like include you in their groups or was it hard to get like American friends? guys uh, they are people. completely friendly they are too much friendly <laughs> uh, really uh, it is amazing because it even though I I did not live an on-campus life I stayed in a in a residence so and it's it, it was not a university residence but a student's residence in general so I had the opportunity to meet also people from different universities and it was amazing because really you know like exchange students want to have fun uh, I, I I was I am a really addicted to study and so on but when I went to America I said okay that's the time of my life I will enjoy it until the last minute and the American guys think like you even though they are not exchanger okay <laughs> so they, they enjoy everything and don't care a lot about studies and so on even though it's their home countries and their home, their home <laughs> university okay they, they are exchange students like you in some ways so they are really really friendly and it's really a great experience also in terms of uh, friendship that you can uh, that you can like create there no problem for that yeah same for me because uh, as i said before the day we arrived we immediately started to meet people and uh, also professors are really available for you and all the people are so excited to meet all exchange students because we are different uh, and we bring a different division to the uh, a bit different vision to um, their point of view so it's really interesting and i remember that we were invited to all the par possible parties uh, to all the travelings and whatever so everyone was like wanted to have us in their group. I don't know exactly why, but it's just because they are really, really friendly under this point of view. And also today, one year later, 
I always text the, them, these people, and I always say uh, I'm getting invited to go in New York, in Texas, uh, everywhere to visit uh, all these people. So um, it's you have uh, you make some really good relationship that, that you can uh, also bring uh, home after your experience. Okay, um, thank you so much, girls. Really, I guess uh, the US are a pretty uh, ambitious destination that looks desirable. <laughs> so I think you'll receive lots of uh, lots of questions in the next days. <laughs> and now I think we can go on with Chile. We have Ludovico. Uh, and I'll leave the floor to Benedetta. She's going to, let's say, interview him now. Benny, are you here? Ludovico, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, hi. Oh. <laughs> Hey guys, um, I'm Benedetta, I'm a second year BS student, and now I'll interview Ludovico about his experience in Chile. So hi Ludovico, can you introduce a bit yourself and tell us about your experience? Sure, so I'm uh, Ludovico Manzoni, uh, from, uh, I was from CLEAM, uh, and uh, I studied in uh, Universidad Adolfo Ibáñez in Viña del Mar, which is uh, a coast uh, city in Chile, about an hour from Santiago. All right, uh, so we have a question for you. Uh, when you left for Chile, did you already speak Spanish? And do you think it's necessary to know Spanish in order to succeed in that exchange program? So I had, uh, my level of Spanish wasn't excellent, to be fair. I studied it just for one year. I just did the Bocconi course. Then I took private lesson like 10 times with a tutor here in Milan. And then I just, you know, read magazines or newspapers, listen to music, watch some TV series in Spanish. And I went there with uh, not that good level of Spanish, but I learned pretty fast. Like, yes, maybe the first month I struggled a bit, but then it was all fine. Uh, I have to say Chile is probably the hardest Spanish of all Latin America because there's a kind of hard dialect. They eat their words a bit. They speak very fast. But even af af after a month, even there, it was all fine. So if you go somewhere else, maybe Argentina or Colombia would probably be even easier. Well, that's, that's a relief, I think, for a lot of people who don't really know Spanish and might want to go. Um, we have another question, which is a bit more about the place itself. So when you think about South America, it can get worrying about the level of criminality because it's usually considered to be pretty high. So do you feel it when you're there? Is it something that is a reality? No, I have to say I, I, I found situations that were much, much better than expected. Not only in my city, like Viña del Mar is super, super safe. At night, perhaps I felt easier to go around there than in Milan. But Vignal Mar is kind of an exception. It's a rich coastal city. Um, I mean, it's up to you guys. It's just don't put yourself into dangerous and stupid situations, but as you would not do them in Italy or traveling anywhere else. Like I've gone often alone to places that uh, people could find dangerous, like uh, Brazil. I've been to Colombia. My travel or oh, to other places like Peru and Argentina, which are easier to go into, never had security problems. Just follow, you know, the basic precautions. Ask people that know these places before going whether an area is safe or not. And, you know, yes, like there are dangerous places. Don't go alone at night in the port of Valparaiso, but probably don't go alone at night even in the port of Genova, maybe. Like, just, you know, avoid doing crazy things. But better than expected, especially Colombia. Bogota and Medellin have a tremendous reputation, but they were super fine. All right, that's, that's, that's also a relief. You bring relief to this yeah. people who maybe have doubts. Um, so, and what about people's mindset? How did you find people, their lifestyle, the way that you felt welcomed? So it depends a bit who you hang out with, because, you know, Chile is a very fragmented and unequal society. I wrote my thesis on that. If someone wants, I can forward it to them. But if you find, like, the right group where you have something in common with, it will be very easy to hang out. And even if you don't, at least in Vigna, there were tons of international people, like 200, 300 international students. So we were also hanging out uh, all the time. And I have to say, in the, in the university, people are friendly. 
That's really nice of you. Um, so just last but not least question for me and then we'll see if people have other questions. Uh, it is pretty well known that the cost of living is not really high there. So was it easy to travel for you to find housing, accommodations, etc.? Okay, so um, I mean, the question is good, but I have to answer it in two separate ways. Like it's easy to travel. I was able to concentrate all my lessons since like three days. So the other four, I was very often traveling. Again, I went to Peru, Argentina, Brazil, all over Chile, in Patagonia, and in Easter Island, et cetera, et cetera. Internal travel in Chile is cheap. External travel, as long as you remain in the continent, is also cheap. What is not that necessarily cheap is living in Chile, especially in Vigna, because there are like a lot of oligopolies. That's the other part of my thesis, by the way, if someone is interested, <laughs> that make the cost of living go up. It's still less than Milan, for reference. But it's not as low as you would expect, like it could be compared to some Italian cities. All right, we have a question and uh, we have a question in the comments that they're asking, did you have to study as much as in Bocconi or is it easier? So in my university, um, Universidad Adolfo Ibanez, there were two types of courses. One in English, which would be our optional ones. Okay you could get them recognized as the option. And they were, they were very easy. They were just for international students and they were very, very easy. You could easily ace them. Then there were the regular courses in Spanish, like I took uh, marketing and uh, uh, GTO. I'm not sure what is it in English, the, like management of technology and innovation. And they are normal courses. Like they are perhaps maybe the same level of difficulty that in Bocconi compared to Bocconi, of course, they're in Spanish, so they have the, the bonus of difficulties, but the vote, uh, the final grade is much more built on. You don't do only a final exam. You do uh, multiple partials, perhaps a presentation, perhaps a lot of group works. So in that way, maybe the amount of work is the same, but it's more spread out. All right, and they're asking, so is it compulsory to at least do some subjects in Spanish? Depends a lot from, I mean, I, I would recommend because I wouldn't go there and not, you know, not do any of the important Bocconi exam, but I don't think it was compulsory because I remember the, there were a lot of French people who have to say didn't study at all. <laughs> and I remember them doing only the English courses because they were the kind of easiest ones. So it depends a lot on, I think, Bocconi rules and stuff like that. I don't think, it, I, I don't think the university mandated it. Maybe Bocconi, Bocconi did. And also the guy, like people from other, from Italy all took Spanish courses, but from other nations, not necessarily. All right. Well, thanks a lot. It was really nice. Oh, wait, hold on. There's a last question. Uh, what, why did you choose Chile in particular? Why would you recommend it instead of Argentina or other destinations? So Argentina is perhaps the most European places of all uh, Latin America, okay? Me personally, when I was in Buenos Aires, it seems like being in Madrid. When I travel very far, I don't like being in places so similar to Italy. I want to go in a place and say, okay, this is different. And Chile is different. I was interested in a lot in the social history of Chile. You know, they had the, the dictatorship, uh, Allende, a coup d'etat, and all of that. that it's very interesting. But if you want something different than Europe, if you want something similar, Buenos Aires, very safe choice, very nice. If you want something different, I would recommend either Chile or Colombia. Like Bogota is beautiful. Well, thank you very much. It was you. a very lovely talk. And uh, thanks for helping. And guys, if you have any other questions here, are it's contacts, so feel free to contact him. And uh, for us, we'll move on to Australia. So Giuseppe, are you here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Hi. Um, so could you please introduce yourself and let us know a bit about your experience? Yeah, so my name is uh, Giuseppe Scone Modica. Uh, I departed for Australia in July in 2018. I studied BM. Now I'm doing a master double degree with Bocconi in LC. And I went to Adelaide, so the University of Adelaide, which is kind of close to Melbourne, on like a bit more eastern, like western than Melbourne. All right. 
So we have a few, well, a few questions for you too. Um, so what would you say are the peculiarities of life in Australia compared to our European lifestyle? Well, what surprised me that by traveling that far, I imagined it to be completely different, like the lifestyle and all that. But what I found out was that every single city, in big city at least in Australia, is extremely westernized. So there's a lot of immigrants from Italy, Germany, UK. So the, the things that you will maybe usually do in Italy or Europe, you can still do that. You can still have like an aperitivo like you have in Milan. You can have it in Adelaide or Melbourne if you go to Little Italy or just even a normal bar. But at the same time, you have a lot of like a lot of immigrants also from other parts of the world. So the Asian population is extremely big. Also the Indian, you have also the Aboriginal culture. So you have the sort of uh, balance between the European colonizers, obviously, that's what they are, and the native population and the Asian uh, population that lives there. So you have this interesting mix. So if you want to stay comfortable and do the things that you know, so aperitivos, dinner, grocery shopping for Italian products or any other products from Europe, you can find them. Maybe a little bit more expensive, but you can still find them. If you want to go more adventures, that is also that option. So it's it's kind of there is something for everyone in everywhere you go there. Well, sounds like a pretty good mix of adventure and keep the basics. <laughs> um, so how how does it feel to move at the other side of the globe, literally? <laughs> It's, it's, uh, you have to plan yourself, like you have to make a plan, like before you enter the plane that takes you to Australia, it's a mental process because you're going to be in that plane for a long time. You're going to pass through Dubai, like most people, they stop in Dubai for like six hours. If I was you, I would get out and maybe visit Dubai also for like a day because most people stop there. And then uh, it's again, 12 hour plane. But when you arrive, it just feels like it feels like another planet because maybe it's a mix of the amount of hours you spend on the plane, but it's also how just things around are. Nothing is familiar, but it is. It feels like some people from Italy went to another planet and started building stuff like they knew, but it's still another planet. It's, the trees are still different. The fauna, the flora, the, all those things are extremely different. And, you know, different in a way that you look at them like, okay, I kind of recognize this, but this is not really home. <laughs> but it, it's exciting because it's not scary. Like I hear stories obviously about spiders, snakes and all that. And obviously they are there in Australia, but you don't really see them if you stay in the cities. And I don't think anyone is going to the farm <laughs> for a change. All right, fair. I, I'm kind of scared of spiders, so I'm not sure, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, talking about spiders, Australia is also well known for the nature and I don't know, surf, beaches and stuff like that. So did you manage to have experiences there, adventures, stuff like that, things yeah. that you'd like to tell us? Yeah. Obviously that was the main, main focus of the exchange in Australia. Like university there, it's a lot, let's say lighter than Bocconi itself. You have to focus uh, lectures on where online at the time as they are now, obviously. And so you can actually follow them from wherever you were. There are steps, kind of seminars that have to be in person, but now they're going to be moved online. And at the time, I used this kind of weird mix to actually travel, which is not that expensive. So I went to the East Coast. I went to the center, the desert in the center of Australia. I went to the big cities of Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, kind of saw them all. The Great, the great Barrier Reef, the Great Ocean Road. There is so many things you can see and it's not even, it's not expensive because if you're willing to stay in hostels, if you're willing to rent a van, the, those are activities that you can do. And just by driving a few hours from the city you're at, wherever university you go to, you manage to see these spectacular places, absolutely stunning. And obviously you get shocked every single time you, you take your car, you imagine to see a normal animal on the road, but it's actually a kangaroo just jumping around as if it's nothing. And you look at it like, again, you're in another planet. It's an alien there. Like you have no idea what it does. You don't know, they'd be like, it's, it's another place. It's just weird, but it's really nice. I recommend it, obviously. That's why I'm here. Hearing all of you guys' stories making me dream. I hope it's making all of you dream too. It's not just me, but yeah. There is a question in the, in the chat that asks, do you have to leave in July for all the Australian university or is the curricular year aligned with the European one in the others? No, I don't, I don't think so. Like uh, for my university, Adelaide, 
and as well as other friends that I met along the way there. Uh, the first semester, well, their second semester starts from July and ends in November. That's what we will treat as first semester. For them, is the second one. And then our second semester will start in February there. So I think that's just a common rule for everywhere in Australia, even though they have different climates, different time zones, that, that's their, their setup. But again, whatever semester you go, you'll manage to get some summer in between. Like at the beginning or at the end, you always get some nice weather because Australia is just like that. Again, you can just travel to the summer weather when it's winter at home and travel to the summer again when it's winter. Like it's, you can do whatever you want. It's okay. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Um, well, if there are no more questions from the chat, thanks a lot. No. It was really nice. Um, and we'll move on. So as for the others, if you need anything else, you have the contacts here and yeah. <laughs> thanks a lot. And we'll move on to Spain with Andrea. Andrea, are you here? Hi, hi good evening. Can you, can you see me, hear me? Yes, oh, perfect. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let us I... know a bit about you and your experience. Yeah, uh, so uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Andrea Tunesi, and uh, during uh, my bachelor, I attended the uh, the CLAM course and uh, the CLAM course. And during uh, the third year, I went in uh, Spain, in uh, at Carlos III University in Madrid, and um, uh, I went also uh, with the, the free mover system. So, if there are anyone who is interested to know more or something more about the free mover system, I will be happy to explain uh, something. And uh, yeah, uh, I chose Spain because uh, uh, basically during my second year, I decided to study sp uh, Spanish and uh, I wanted to improve uh, and perfection my language, uh, my Spanish uh, language. So I, I thought that uh, Madrid uh, was uh, the, the perfect, uh, the perfect uh, situation to, to do that. And uh, also because I was curious about, uh, to, to know something more about the Spanish culture and, uh, and so on. And, uh, it is an amazing country, and I recommend to visit uh, to visit it. Lovely. We already have questions in the chat. So you said the world free mover. Everybody now is super interested. So there's uh, Teresa asking, as a free mover, how do you apply for a semester in university? Do you still need a certain average to get accepted? Is it less or higher than with Bocconi program? Okay. Uh, well. Um... In general, uh, the, the process that uh, I decided to adopt uh, basically was to to wait for the result of the exchange uh, exchange problem. I suggest you everyone to 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 put in your list only um, only places that uh, you would like to go, obviously. And um, uh, as a free mover student, I think that there is not a a, a lim um, an average an average to go. But uh, uh, there is a limit with uh, with the credits that you have to you, that you have to to get. So there is a li um, a minimum number of exams that you have to overcome uh, before to to go with uh, with the free mover system. And with the free mover system, you have basically to send an email to the to the to the university in which you want to go, and. Uh, and then uh, basically explaining that you want to to do an a free mover experience and they will uh, they will uh, give you all the information basically the, this was my case and the case of carlos tercero there are, uh, in the past so many students were with a free mover program in at carlos tercero so they know basically it, it is enough to send an email uh, the same is i i had friends that they did the free mover program at uh, san diego university uh, also in Vietnam, but I don't know if it is still possible today. Uh, yeah, that uh, that's it. It, it. There is not a, a minimum average, but you have to 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 do a minimum number of exams. Um, and uh, there is also a question which is more general about what's a free mover. <laughs> yeah, uh, the free mover system is uh, the, is very different from the exchange program a program because the exchange program is promoted by Bocconi University, and the free mover is is basically is up to you for for everything. You have to contact the university, you have to send emails, and once you uh, once you have been accepted at the foreign university, you have to send to Bocconi uh, your. Um, 
your uh, your letter of acceptance in the foreign university and from that moment Bocconi will consider you um, a stu uh, foreign student in a foreign university and then uh, after that you you will convert all uh, the the exams uh, in uh, in the same way I think of the exchange students right thank you very much and uh, one last question yeah. what 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 do you think were the main differences between Italy and which of those did you particularly appreciate? Yeah, uh, well, obviously it is not a, a cultural shock. It is not like to go in Australia or uh, Chile. It, it, Spain is very similar for, uh, for, uh, for us in general. Uh, the main difference is, uh, the, is the climate, obviously, because it is quite uh, hot. And uh, the amazing thing is that uh, I think that Spain should have the, the time zone of London, but actually uh, they had our time zone. For this reason, uh, days are longer. So uh, sunset is later. Also in November, it is, uh, uh, there is sunset at uh, uh, 8 p.m. Uh, and so it is, uh, it is like to live in summertime uh, for, uh, for all the time. So this is uh, amazing. And uh, in general, uh, life in Madrid in particular is, uh, is amazing. There is a uh, a university population, we can say, uh, which is amazing. There are a lot of foreign students from uh, all uh, Europe with the, foreign, with the, the Erasmus program, but uh, I had also classmates from uh, Turkey, um, also from Brazil, uh, France, uh, so, uh, United States. So it is, it is amazing in general, an amazing experience. It sounds, it sounds really nice. I mean, been to Spain was great. So it sounds yeah. really yeah. great. There are other questions actually about being a free mover. Uh, the first one is, I'm curious as to why you chose to do it as a free mover, if you feel comfortable to answer, obviously. Uh, yeah, I am, um, uh, first of all, uh, also because I didn't uh, answer uh, to the completely to the to a question uh, of before. Uh, it is important to remember that with the free mover program, uh, you, uh, you will not able to, to get one point extra for uh, your degree. Um, and then the second important thing to remember um, is um, uh, is that, uh, as I said, it is up to you. Is everything up to you uh, to be accepted? Uh, to be accepted in a foreign university with a free mover program, basically, it is uh, it is not difficult uh, because uh, you, um, in general, you pay uh, the fee for uh, you. You pay the fee also of the foreign uh, university. Uh, so it is not very, very difficult to be accepted, but there are some universities that uh, do that have the free mover program and some university which have not. So, for example, a friend of mine requested the free mover program at a university in Barcelona and uh, they decided to not accept it. Uh, but and uh, other universities in uh, um, are, are known in Bocconi and from Bocconi students uh, because in the past there were a lot of free mover, uh, free mover students like as I say the San Diego University or uh, Carlos Tercero so in general my suggestion is to contact universities that in the past uh, had uh, uh, other free mover students from Bocconi because they, they could give uh, you some suggestions and uh, it is easier also for the two universities all right well, thanks a lot. It was also a really nice talk. I feel like I'm saying that too much, but they're all very nice talks. So what am I supposed to say? <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Bye, thank and, you. Uh, I think there are no more questions from the chat anyways. So we'll move on to our last but not least destination. Uh, Maria Chiara, are you here? Yes, hi. Hi. So uh, can you please introduce yourself and let us know a bit about your experience? Yes, sir. So I'm Maria Chiara. I'm a third year CLEM student and I'm currently attending my exchange in Moscow University and so in Ireland. And I arrived here just like one month ago, actually. All right. <laughs> so you're, you're in the middle of the experience, really. Yeah, truly. <laughs> so even if I don't know, I'm not really sure of how much you can feel it and live it due to COVID, but how is life in the Netherlands? Is it similar to Italy? And how has your university experience been so far? Well, but it's kind of, I mean, I haven't like uh, gotten into really deep contact with the Dutch culture since 
here everything is closed because we are the Netherlands is in lockdown and it was in lockdown um already when I arrived here so like shops are closed that so you can just like hang out with others but you can go to supermarkets and like essential goods so, go, uh, essential goods shops but are, uh, other than this you cannot do basically anything but yes from the first like impact I can truly say that like Dutch people are really cozy they're really helpful they all speak uh, real uh, fluent English so I haven't had any problem to communication with the others so even at the supermarkets you can like easily communicate with everyone so both younger and adults so from this point of view and also concerning the fact that they are really really like um cozy i can say that they're like similar to italian so he's kind of easy to adapt it haven't had any difficulties of course it's like uh, worth um concerning like the fact that we 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 can really spend most of our time in the house but i still had the possibility to meet many exchange students here from master university because for example like uh, the library is open so you can go and study into the library as well as we I think you are doing it right now in Bocconi so it's easy to to get to know people hang out with them have a beer at the park have a beer in the city center so even though I think of course you can still like do something and like concerning university I can say that they use a totally different method to compare to Bocconi ones because here they apply the problem-based learning system so basically, teacher has to, to read the chapter or the book before the lesson. So yeah, it's more like an individual uh, study. And then during the lectures, we are all, we, which I mean, we all students are involved in, this, in a discussion in which we have to come up with like a real example. So our ideas, point of view concerning the theories that we have studied. So it's much more practical type of study. So you're not asked to learn by heart like uh, theories or definitions and you're just like uh, asked to deeply understand things and apply them into real framework reality. So it, like, it's kind of different. And also like uh, classes are made up by no more than 15 students and we are uh, divided them into subgroups. And so we were asked to submit like each week teamwork. So there are like many weekly deadlines. So also like the, the type of study is different from Bocconi's one. And I think the total workload is quite similar, but the fact is that the, the, the study is much more like um, continuous. So you have to study day by day. You cannot like study 10 days before the exam like we usually do in Italy. You have to study like day by day, otherwise you're not able to meet all the deadlines. All right. Well, it sounds for for somebody that he isn't uh, exchanging a pandemic. It sounds like you're still having a glimpse of everything. So that's yeah, really yeah, nice. totally. No, and, I, uh, I'm having fun even though there's pandemic. <laughs> well, that's really nice to hear. It gives us second years a bit of hope for next year, maybe. So yeah. there's actually a question about this in the chat, which is: Would you recommend doing the exchange online in the foreign country, anyways? Or is it and is it easy to get to know other students? I mean, uh, yeah, from my real short experience of also that is because I mean I'm attending all the lessons online because as I re as I already said, like there's lockdowns of course, uh, all universities are closed. But I suggested because for example, what I thought uh, before like deciding whether to come or not to the Netherlands was like okay, have to uh, follow lessons or life both in Italy or here. But at least here, for example, as soon as I finish lessons, I have, I have the opportunity to hang out with the others, like in the city centers. I met many exchange students. And also like the important thing is that here during like lessons, uh, we have to uh, keep our webcam open. So there's really lots of interaction even with the other students in your class. So you really like get to know them. So you easily like exchange number, telephone numbers and like uh, organize, hang out all together. So it's, it's like really easy to, to meet people and especially of course exchange students. And so, yeah, I truly suggest to come also because I mean, at least you have the possibility to speak another language, uh, travel, meet new persons. 
and also because like here in the Netherlands, even though there's lockdown, you are free to move everywhere you want. You can move even through the, the countries. For example, last week I've been to Utrecht, which is like two hours uh, far from Maastricht, but you not have to like justify your moving. So you're free to move, you're free to go where, whatever you want. So yeah, I mean, I suggest it to you to go and leave um, the experience by person, but. <laughs> I think, a lot, I think a lot of people will take that advice and try to go. <laughs> okay, just one last question uh, to finish on a beautiful note. Can you tell us about your best memories that you've built so far? Uh, well, uh, one of my best memories until now was just me. Uh, I mean, the one of last week when I've been to Utrecht. So we, I, I organized with a group of people, the one you can see in the picture here in the slide. And we went there, so we took the train and we just like visited the new city. And it was really nice because uh, Utrecht is much more like a typical Dutch city. It's really similar to Amsterdam, for example, whereas Maastricht is kind of more of an international city. So uh, it's not like the typical Dutch one. So it was really nice to see another city. And also like here in the Netherlands, it's really like, a uh, great event to hang out in the afternoon because the streets are crowded of people. They even like, even though like shops are closed, you can see like go to a bar, uh, take a spritz or a beer and drink it there across the river and like make uh, your stuff like a very deep. And many, many people do it. So it's great to see in a park and like talk to others. So like it's fine. At least better than nothing. Yeah, you, you have a little tiny little bit of a normal life at moments. And I think we all yeah, I, I try to, I try to <laughs> be safe, but still. This is getting, <laughs> so it was really nice to have you here and thanks a lot for sharing your experience and thanks to all of the other speakers. And I think we're yeah, done. And thank you uh, so much to everyone who attended the event. Uh, as we said, if you have any question on uh, for our guests, you, you can like feel free to contact them. And uh, in the next days, we're gonna uh, publish the guide with all the infos that we shared during the event. So check it out and see. Yes. And the event will also be published on YouTube in case you want to rewatch it because you missed something or just because you love to hear about other people's <laughs> experience traveling around the world because you miss it so much like me, then yes, go and look at it again. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I would say thank, thank you to God. everyone and bye, probably. <laughs> and if you need us, you know where to find us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks everyone for coming. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice evening. Bye.